now we are uh, this week we are going to start our first case study and for this case study uh, i'd like to welcome omkar uh, who uh, is uh, who works at flipkart and milan maybe you can give us a short introduction to omkar and then give an opportunity to omkar to explain uh, what he does at flipkart omkar karandikar has been uh, involved in logistics and warehouse planning for uh, more than 15 years now uh he's currently director inventory planning uh at uh, flipkart before this he used to work uh, with meebak consulting and today i think omkar uh, we'd like to talk a little bit to you about you know how e-commerce companies organize their distribution and uh, what sort of data gets generated in this process so welcome thank you thanks uh thanks uh, both of you for introducing me yeah so uh, it's a very crazy world in e-commerce um, last one year or one and a half years i'll say starting from covid has been uh, a revolution in uh, e-commerce industry and uh, it's one of the industries which has actually seen a uh, uprise in in this difficult time starting with home deliveries and uh, delivery of essentials it has it has become a backbone for the whole indian economy right now and i'll say all the all the e-commerce industry came up to the front and uh, supported uh, this lockdown and ensured that people are not starved uh, at uh, at this time uh, what makes e-commerce unique i think is the growth that we have seen in india uh, though we see that industry is growing at let's say 60 70 80% every year but this is just a start right we have not not even scratched the surface yet uh there is huge untapped market in india tier 2 tier 3 cities and uh, it is going to be a long growth story um flipkart has been in india for 10 years now flipkart knows about what indian customers want and we are uh, we are tailoring our services uh, to the to the customers uh this whole exercise is just to give a flavor of uh, what e-commerce is all about and how uh, how we look at the data and how uh, we build ourselves for the next uh, next set of growth uh, incentives so so would you i mean just for just for statistics since we presented some statistics about various industries in the first uh, few weeks yeah. in course e-commerce as a percentage of commerce the total retail industry in india would be what what percentage it will be actually very low if if i look at a uh, unorganized and organized uh, retail in general uh e-commerce will be in single digit market share and is it growing uh, the market share is growing significantly yes market share is growing pretty fast and there are different versions of e-commerce which are coming right so flipkart and uh, the other players in market are typically the platform wide e-commerce companies right but there are different versions of e-commerce which are coming up where um, there there are uh, new models which are coming up where uh, Uh, the inventory is actually distributed in stores and it is going to get sold from there so yeah it's it's going to be a long big story for uh, e-commerce to grow in india okay and if you compare uh, our e-commerce industry with the e-commerce industry in china or usa would we say we are heading to those levels or we are not any that close so china is always a template for india in e-commerce right um so there are a lot of new initiatives which are uh, which are executed in china uh we look at china as a template and uh, there are a lot of replication of those services and offerings which happen in india from growth perspective china has already exploded they they are into 30 40% uh, market share from retail perspective uh we are not yet there we are we are in we will be around close to 10% roughly um so there is long way to go again but china teaches us a lot of things what customer want how how do we enable speed uh, what kind of new service offerings can be delivered to customer so yes china is a template that we look at uh, us is a different market altogether us and uh, europe i'll say it. it's a little bit of different market um, there the services are not mass market china is a mass market uh, e-commerce industry for for example india is right now uh going from niche to mass market right so we follow more chinese trends than um, than european or uh, us trends um us is another interesting story altogether 
uh, we have a lot of learnings from US how to do e-commerce or and how not to do e-commerce as well. How do we expand? How do we plan for future? Uh, make or break to invest long term in one location or to invest distributed in long term. There are a lot of learnings from US that we are getting. From a data perspective, since the data science course, Omkar, is there a, a very dif- big difference between the kind of data that you see in e-commerce from the data you collect in retail, typical retail scenario? Yes, so um, I'll relate to the experience I had from my uh, consulting period, right? So I worked with a lot of FMCG companies and a lot of uh, retail companies at that point of time. Uh, the biggest problem uh, in those, uh, I'll say in that era, was to no customer, right? I'm If I go to, uh, let's say, an offline store, let's say a central, right? Probably the central person, the, the central store manager will not know me as a customer, right? At the time of billing, they might ask you for a mobile number just for billing purpose, but I, I may refuse to give my mobile number. So in terms of data, in terms of knowing customer, uh, the offline retail is way behind. And how we switched the gap or how we bridged the gap in traditional retail was the typical traditional mom and pop stores, right? Uh, when you used to go to your corner store, the person used to know you, you, you not only you, all the whole family used to know, he or she used to um, uh, tell everything about it or medical store. He used to say, okay, your father's medicines will be over, take it, right? So that, that was the relationship with the customer. Now, the modern retail, probably somewhere it was difficult to establish in offline world, but online world, it is coming back big time because uh, that's a big difference we have. We know the customer, we know where the customer is, where uh, where um, the customer is going, what are their uh, browsing habits, which category a customer is uh, interested in, and we can, uh, we can look at the customer's uh, preferences, buying history, um, shopping history, cart history, favorites, all those things are available to us, right? Mm. Because of that, e-commerce is able to build a customer profile where a customer is, uh, I mean, where we are able to predict about customer to a great detail, to a great detail. We we, We are able to predict whether a person is he or she, whether a person is married, whether the person has kids or no kids, and what kind of demographics that person belongs to. So we know whether a person is going to buy a high-end smartphone, let's say Apple, or is going to go for a value smartphone, right? And basis that we are able to actually um, offer a customized experience to each and every customer. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. When you look at, let's say, Flipkart website, yeah? If you log in, a customer A and customer B may not get the same website at any point of time. There will be a lot of customizations, a lot of recommendations, a lot of uh, merchandising which will happen for each and every customer. And that makes uh, e-commerce a little easy and a little difficult as well. Uh, 